with another episode for the honest podcast so today we're going to be talking about god's law and specifically if you don't know what that means i'm really talking about the ten commandments okay and if y'all don't know them by now there's there's there's, i don't even know what to say in that to be honest with you you should know your ten commandments by now you don't need to know them by heart in the order but you should at least know them okay all right and once again, I do have Kaboom joining me today. So are you ready, Kaboom, to start talking about this topic? Sure. We're going to learn about all your secrets. So yeah, let's get into it. Did you say my secrets? Did I say your secrets? No. I said uh, we're going to learn about secrets today. Right. Secrets are yours. Secrets are you. I don't think so. I don't really have any secrets, so. <laughs> that's, okay. what, that's what they all say. You know, they all say, I have no secrets. And then we get to a point and then they're like, I can't discuss that right now. Because, you know, mm-hmm. in the name of Jesus, bless it. Holy, yes, bless it. So we're going to get to it. I'm ready to hear we about should you. should do a video with you as an old church lady with a wig on and a hat. We should do this video about your secrets so we can learn about your secrets yes darling yes your secrets we're so ready ready. well i'm gonna start off by reading exodus 20 and god spake all these words saying i am the lord god which have brought thee out of the land of egypt out of the house of bondage thou shalt have no other gods before me Thou shalt not make unto thee any grave image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. A shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six thou shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the Sabbath day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor nor his donkey, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And all the people saw the thunder and lightning, and the noise of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they were moved and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. You shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall make unto you gods of gold. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, shall sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings, thy peace offering, thy sheep, thy oxen, in all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewn stone, for if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. Neither shalt thou go up by steps unto my altar, that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. So that is Exodus 20, 
King James Version. All right. Now, Avery, do you know your Ten Commandments? Even though I just read them to you, do you know them? See, there's no correct answer to that because you just read them. So I could be like, hey, of course I know. It, but if I didn't know, you would never know. So it's kind of, honestly, you should ask that question before we started. No, I'm saying, do you know the order? Like by heart, even though I just read it to you, just reading it to you, do you know? Even though you read it to you. You see how you just defeated your own question by saying mm -hmm. like, do you know the order? Even though I just read it to you. So honestly, yes, I know the order because literally, even if I didn't know, you just read it to me. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, well, with the question. Do you know the most important one? The question is not do I. The question is do you. But I'm so, asking you the question. But the question is not. I can know the question, but do you know the question? See, the thing is, do you know to remember a certain day to keep it holy? The six days shall be labor. No. Do all. I honestly think that because I was reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, I was Absolutely. reading all of those chapters, and I remember Jesus said that because someone asked him, What's the most com important commandment? and he said, Love God was the most important one and then it was love thy neighbor i remember reading that but i honestly think that i do agree with that being said love god is the most important thing because if you don't love god then it kind of defeats the purpose of everything else doesn't it i think you're muted <laughs> i think you're muted <laughs> Well, I was saying I give you that. That's a that's a very good good point to focus on loving, you know, love God. Do you love God? Yes, I do, but I more fear him, to be honest with you. You fear God. Well, I got a question for you. Is is it better to fear God or to love God? I believe we're supposed to do both. So I'm not really sure which one is more important. I mean, are you supposed to fear him? Are you supposed to fear somebody you love? I remember they always talk about how a woman that fears God is to be cherished or something like that. I remember reading that somewhere. I'm sorry. I do not remember where I read that, but I know we're supposed to fear God in a certain limits. It's supposed to be a specific thing where we are supposed to fear him. Hmm. I don't mean like be terrified and hide from him because you can't really. I was going to say, you saying we're supposed to be out there just be like, you know, because I just want you to think about, think about this with me. All right. So you have all these people in the Bible, you know. Now, what did they fear God? Okay. Like, let's be honest. You, you guys trying to talk to them, you know. So you have Adam, you know. Adam. Ah! And he's just running off like. You don't want them to fear. You want them to love him, but like have an understanding that he has a greater power than you. So it's kind of like I'm not scared of you, but I I respect you. Kind of like your boss. You should never be scared of your boss, but you should respect him enough to know that hey, he can fire me. He can let me go. He can be like, there you are. There's the door. You know, it's time for you to get it moving. But I, that's how I feel. I feel like you should respect, you should love God and respect and understand his will and power. Like, like he has the power and he has the understanding and everything like that. I don't think you should fear God. Mm. But that's my own personal opinion. Without you know, shit. like with certain situations in the Bible, you have like uh, Peter's situation, for example, before he was crucified upside down. He was like, he obviously showed that he fears the punishment, like the eternal punishment.
from God rather than the fear of the king. He's like, look, if you're going to crucify me, crucify me upside down. But I'm not about to disown God. That's not what I'm about to do. I mean, like, I fear, I fear God more than any person I can fear. Because that's who I really need to answer to. Like, you know, you're scared of your parents, but I'd rather do what God told me if it's against my parents than what my parents tell me if it's against what God That's where the confusion comes in. Because they, when, when, like, when it's taught to you as a child to honor your father and your mother, in a sense, the way it's presented by church member, everything is like, you need to honor, you need to fear your parents, you need to respect. And it's like, the thing is, like, honor them. Not fear them, honor them. So, I mean, like having a respect toward your parents, like you respect what they teach you, you understanding. You ain't like going out there, my mama slapped the mess off you. No, 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 no. You respect them, honor them, but you don't fear them. Because the thing is, like, the moment you fear them, they're like, I got you in a box. Kind of like that. You know, you ever seen Emperor's Renew Groove? So you remember that moment where Yzma's like, I'm going to kiss him and put him in a box. And then I'm going to mail that box to myself. And when they arrive, I'm going to smash it with the head. So you, like, you don't want it where your parents are putting you in a box and they control you. It's more about you just want to have an understanding. Like, I'll honor you. And I'm going to honor you. I'm not going to disrespect you, mother and father. I love you. I'm not going to be afraid of you, though. Because if I'm afraid of you, I'm going to go nowhere. Well, when I say fear, I'm talking about like as a, like like being a little kid, where if you get in trouble, you get a whooping, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know anyone that likes to get a whooping. They're terrified of getting a whooping, but the whooping is doing a punishment because you did something that you weren't supposed to do, or did the complete opposite of what you were told or what you were taught not to do. So, I'm saying if I was taught one thing. That contradicts the Bible. Like I knew what they were telling me. I'm not saying that's the case, but I'm saying, like, for example, if you were to do something that your parents told you, but you know it goes against what God says, are you going to listen to your parents or are you going to listen to God? Even though you're a kid, like use as an, using that as an example. So you, let me get this straight. So you asking like, would I be more fearful of God or my parents? Yes, in that situation. I mean, in that situation, let's 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 keep it real. When you a kid and you do wrong, but you more fear like in the mix, you will be fearful of both because you don't know which one's gonna be worse. Now you know God's in the end, God's way is gonna probably be a little bit worse than the other. But like my thing about it is like if I sin, all right, let's just throw a scenario in there. Um, I'm let's say I'm sixteen years old, seventeen years old, and I and I'm drinking. Okay, I don't know I'm not supposed to be drinking. All right. I know it's a it's a commandment, and I know it's a you know it's it's my parents' rule. Like you're 16. See, the thing about God is God can make you, his response to your action take time. Okay, He can make that thing where like because you had that drink of alcohol, something jacks up in your body later on down the road. Whereas your parents. Whatever happened because you drank, that can happen in the next day or two. So in a sense, I mean, I'll be a little more fearful of God because I don't know what's going to happen later on down the road. I don't want to be where they're like, did you ever have a drink of alcohol? And you're like, you're on a, you're on a machine, everything like, I had one drink. And they're like, well, that messed your body up. And God's just like, my child, you shouldn't have did it. So my thing is like that's the one thing I can't say I respect about God. He has a he has very good patience where he can play the weight game just to teach you a lesson. Where his parents, their weight game is just scary. Um, but you know, I would say it's kind of like I'm I'm kind of in between. Like I'm fearful of where God's gonna take and how long he's gonna get there. But I'm also fearful with my parents, like what's gonna happen. So it's kind of like it depends on what what I've done. Like I'm more fearful, like how God, cause like God is like He's God. He's the great, great being. He's omnipotent. He's almighty and everything. Like that. But you are kind of a little more fearful about like how it's gonna end with Him. 
at the end of this time, when we all, like, when he comes back, it's kind of like, he gonna look at your record and be like, whoa, you didn't do this, this, and this, this, and this. Whereas, like, with your parents, your record kind of stops at your parents' house when you reach 18. Like, you're an adult. Now you can get out of my house. You can leave now. Like, one of those, like, I've raised you to what I need you to be. And it's kind of more you're on your own at that point. Mm. I mean, they're like, kick it out. You're 20. One. I know. You didn't let me finish. <laughs> I was about to, one. Okay, one. Yeah, you're 21. All right, so with you being 21, your parents have pretty much raised you. <laughs> you are grown at this point. You are, you are like, you're... And once you get that 18, it's kind of like you're an adult now. You can get locked up. You can get thrown in jail. You can and get. So that's one of the reasons I'm thankful. I'm not one of those people to like fight. Like, I don't, I think fighting is really stupid. So I don't really have to worry about getting locked up because I don't, you know, I might struggle with God's commandments, but I don't break no laws. No. I don't usually do anything. So you're saying you a sinner. You're just not. I, I know I'm a sinner. I know I need to improve. I improve day by day, but so, so like, yeah. I don't do anything illegal. Be like, I'm not a criminal. I am I'm not a criminal. <laughs> yeah, I am not a criminal. So I don't have to worry about getting locked up. If I get locked up, it's because I was framed. I don't do anything to get locked up. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Well, then, well, let me ask you this. Since you, since you just threw it out there, you don't you. You know, you're a deep, bad sinner. What sin of the Ten Commandments do you struggle with? Um, I remember when I first became Adventist, since I was the only person in my household that would keep the Sabbath when I'm not in my grandmother's house. It was really hard to do that because at first, like, you know, all I knew about was Veggie Tales, um, a few gospel songs. So it was really hard to keep the Sabbath because I didn't really have anything and I didn't have anybody to do it with so if I wasn't at my grandmother's house I wouldn't do it and I was piece of cake because I have all this stuff but um the one that I struggle with the most out of all of those would be I think it would be oh that's let me see I'm really trying to think like which one is hard um Okay, so when it says do not covenant, is that saying like wanting or be jealous of something? You said do not covenant? Yeah, you when it like, says do not covenant your neighbor's wife, ox, you know, stuff like that. Is it talking about stealing or is it talking about jealous, wanting what they have? Jealous, wanting. Yeah, I think that'd probably be the worst that I struggle with because, you know, like, I want to be done with school, but due to this virus, it got shut down, so I'm still not certified, and I'm not making money <laughs> to get a new car, so I'm just like, must be nice to have a new car, you know? It's not, like, specifically being jealous of one person. It's like, oh, I wish I finished school. Oh, I wish I had a new car, but, hey, that wasn't the plan. Hopefully this year, when school opened back up, I can be done. So, that's probably the worst one, to be honest with you. It's a, what about you? You be very false with it, but you get your neighbor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, be, you be coveting your neighbor's stuff? You like? I'd be like, I wish I had that car. I wish I had a new car. I don't be like bitter, jealous. I'd be like, dang, I wish I had that. But I'd be like, that car nice, though. Yeah, I wouldn't steal it though. <laughs> Let's hope you wouldn't steal it. That that'd be kind of this and that. That's a nice car. I think like out of the ten, that's the one I struggle with because like I wanted to be on a certain level at twenty one, and I'm not on that level. But that's okay because I'm not far from it. I'm almost there. Well, I can honestly say, like when I reach twenty one. You know, I had a dream, you know, when I reached 21. I was like, I'm going to be a party person. I'm going to be out there partying, drinking. I'm going to be living it up when I hit 21. 
But Where you? the Lord had another plan for me. So like I was a 16, I was diagnosed with like hypoglycemia and Gray's disease. And because of that, like I went through this whole period, I was in the hospital and I had all this stuff. So it's kind of like when I reached a certain age, I was like, I can drink now. But then I found out like with my condition, one shot for an average person is like 10 shots for me. So like mm-hmm. one beer bottle is like about seven or eight for me. So and did then, you drink or did you play it safe and not drink? Uh, I kind of made that decision at that moment in time. I really couldn't because like I didn't know the effects that it would have. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad you didn't because then you probably yeah. wouldn't be here. You were glad. I was hurt. I was like, so I kind of went. So it's like every time, you know, you have those friends who are like, Avery, I'm like, I'm going to pray for you as I drink this ginger beer. So that, my beer, I was like, <laughs> gin, everybody's like, oh, I'm like ginger beer. The best, best beer or root beer. I have those, I have those sweet non-alcoholic, but the, that was, I would say my struggle was probably with the Ten Commandments, so, though. You know, I saw people say, I would say, like, jealousy is, like, probably the hardest thing, like, for people, like, I want that. I can have that. And you just start, like, cause, and I think that's the hard part, like, when you have those covenant, covenant things, like, you, you start to dream about it. You even go to sleep, like, dreaming about your neighbor's car. Or your neighbor's house or your neighbor's life like i was the type of person who like i would say like i didn't worship famous people but like there are like i have a great standpoint for heroes and like my heroes are like will smith and nick cannon and so like i kind of like like i was jealous of their lifestyle and like and i wanted their lifestyle i wanted to have their lifestyle so i started like building my own empire building my own business and everything like similar to their way of lifestyle so that was it that would be my struggle like stop to stop kind of like building towards somebody else's lifestyle and which i have in the sense started partnering my own way creating my own business on a different platform and everything like that so i'll say that which commandment do you find is a piece of cake or if there's more than one that's a piece of cake to you which one is what that I means? mean the adultery the killing the stealing I mean those are a piece of cake it's kind of like let's be honest you still you're gonna go to jail the drinking I literally can't um and the adultery let's be honest you commit adultery was you can end up in jail too or dead yeah because the people oh, people out here crazy so <laughs> like that's not wise anyway exactly. so it's kind of like <laughs> easy oh, you know, what about you i think that even though it says adultery I think it also counts for even if you're just in a relationship, not even married yet, and you cheat. You know what yeah. I mean? I feel like it's just cheating in general, not just specifically for marriage, because dating is practicing for marriage. So if you can't last dating, someone's not going to think you're going to last married. Even though there have been some cases. There are some cases. Like, so you can't, I would say, like, that's why, like, that's kind of iffy. It's like, Cause, and I think that's the one thing like people do talk about, like, like when you're in a relationship, there's no ring on the finger. So the, you know, you got guys, you got girls, you got all people who are like, ain't no ring. So I can date as many things, but, but honestly, if you're preparing, like you're doing the steps to prepare for marriage, it's kind of like, you need to act like there is a ring on that thing. You need to show that commitment to us. Like, even though we're not there yet, that's the plan of where we're moving toward. So let's set it up in that nature so you know i think that i don't think i would be able to actually kill somebody i don't think i really would be able to like i don't own a gun i don't want to own a gun if anything i own a taser 
because it won't kill you unless you've got a heart issue. But usually, like, it doesn't tend to kill you. Just like, you know, yeah. just zap you and you can run off somewhere. Because I don't want, even for self defense, I don't want the guilt of killing someone on me. I don't think God can handle that guilt. I would be terrified. Cause you, even though they're doing something bad, like if you think you don't know if they have kids or wife or grandkids until after so it's like oh no i took somebody's mom or dad away i don't want that guilt on me i do not want that. that's terrifying piece of cake for you not to do it yeah but i'm saying somebody robbing you and trying to kill you and it's like you kind of don't have a choice if you're trying to get away and that's the only way there's always another way it's just if they have a gun let's just play it safe you can take my TV. Oh, you want to know where my bank account is? It's right <laughs> over there. <laughs> the combination is five, four, three, two, one. Just don't kill me, okay? I'll sit right here. I ain't got to call no one. That, I, you just play it safe. You know, they rob you. You just be like, <laughs> rob me. <laughs> you can rob me. Just leave me on the corner. Just give me 25 cents so I can call my mama. And tell her to come get me. That, that, that's how you got to play. You play it safe and smart. You'll be all right moving forward. And then, like, if you, uh, the, um, which, which commandment is it? Is it the, okay, so I had noticed something about, the Ten Commandments. When I was on Google, I was searching it because I was trying to screenshot the Ten Commandments for one of my friends to memorize the commandments. And I had noticed that in Sunday churches, when they say the Ten Commandments, well, one thing, actually, they don't really talk about the Ten Commandments, at least to the Sunday churches I've been to. I don't recall them ever talking about the Ten Commandments. But when they were brought up, it was Instead of the fourth commandment, it was a third one. And it said, keep the Lord's day holy. But it doesn't say the Sabbath. Because majority people, even Sunday worshipers, know that the seventh day is Sabbath. And they know it's Saturday. But it says, keep the Lord's day holy instead of the Sabbath. So I think they kind of did that. Like, I think that was kind of odd and suspicious. But it really stuck out to me when I read that. Because I was like, this isn't right. Because keep the Sabbath is usually the fourth commandment. It's not the third. And it doesn't say holy day. It says keep the Sabbath holy. You know what I mean? That seems kind of odd to me. I mean, as long as you keep the Sabbath holy. And it, it, I, I think you should be okay. But you got to kind of make sure you keep the Sabbath you know, people be trying to, people be doing that cheat code, I feel like it's sad, though. Oh, like loopholes? Like, yeah, like, you'd be like, I'm keeping it holy. How? And they're sitting there like, see, I just pour my, my alcohol in my cup. It's still holy. I prayed over it. No. And we're a little bit like, I'm not watching, like, see, see, what I'm watching, uh, there is Jesus in the in the movie you see they talk there's a church scene there's like a good five minute church scene in the movie so technically i'm still keeping it holy with jesus because what i do is i skip the beginning part and i just watch the church scene or like see we just have enough family we just out here working but we working for jesus we, we working on my mama's house because she needed uh, help. No, 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 that, no. That's an automatic no. Like, even when, I, even when I did drink beer, I wasn't, like, an alcoholic or nothing. I, I was drinking maybe, like, one every few days or one a week. And I never got drunk because I'm going to be honest with you. I never got drunk. Never want to get drunk. But when I did drink beer, it would be, like, once or twice a week. And it only probably last for like about a month but even on the sabbath i ain't drink i did not drink on the sabbath even when i was drinking i'm not saying like oh it's perfectly fine to drink no that's between you and god that got nothing to do with me that's between you and god but i personally when i was drinking did not drink on the sabbath 
it didn't it, it just wasn't right to me so i didn't drink on the sabbath i drank on another day but i wouldn't drink on the sabbath but i stopped drinking Hallelujah. But I wasn't an alcoholic or never got drunk. Because when I saw somebody get drunk, I was like, ooh, I never want that. That looks awful. You don't want that to be your ministry? Nope. See, and that's a good thing. You made that transition. And some of I love Arizona. Huh? The Arizona and pot, the only canned drinks I drink. Yeah, I just drink ginger beer. Ginger. You talking about root beer? No. Did you really just say root beer? No, no. Ginger. Ginger beer. It's literally yeah. called ginger beer? Yes. I ginger beer. The best soda you will ever taste in your life. You need to go talk to any island person about some ginger beer. And all my island people who are watching this video, you need to message her, email this email, the nine pocket. Ginger beer is life. I will call moms and Pastor North, and they will hit ginger beer is life. Do I have to get that uh, imported or something? Because I don't know where to. No. Is there a store I can get that from, or I have to get that? Yes. There are many stores, Walmart, the Kroger. The why is it? Why did you say the Kroger? Why is it the you Kroger? Sam's Club. You can order it on the Amazon. You need to try get on this ginger beer life. I promise. Once you try that ginger beer life, ain't no soda gonna be the same. So, which one was first, root beer or ginger beer? Because I feel like it seemed like the same thing. I was transformed to a ginger beer man when I went to Oakwood and I met my friend Tyree Smith Tweed. All right. He transformed me into a ginger beer man. And I was like, this is the best non alcoholic soda pop in the world. First time I had it, and like, but the best of the best is Bermuda ginger beer. When you try that, you know how you you sometimes you take a burners and you're like, and it hits you, and you're like, whoa, that's like four times it. Yeah, that doesn't sound good. Oh, but it's the bomb, diggity. Get on the ginger beer band wagon you need to become a <laughs> lifestyle i can admit it i'm addicted to ginger beer it is where i live i wish i had a can right now to showcase ginger beer ginger is the way to live okay just saying it's life mm. oh I got a question for you do you think that watching Christian comedy like a Christian comedian is okay to do on the Sabbath I do it all the time so. okay because some people think since it's com comedy, it's not appropriate. My thing about it is they feel like it's not. Some people feel it's not appropriate because they're sitting there talking about church people and they're doing all this. Stuff. Listen here. My thing about it, it, it it's comedy and it's, a, and it's Christian comedy. I watch it all the time. Kevin on stage, there's like Michael Jr. There are so many Christian comedians. Literally, I thought about doing a Christian comedy special myself talking about Christian problems in church. Actually, I probably did one. Actually, I did do one on my last episode of, you know, what's up with that? Talk about church community. But we're not going to talk about that. Don't even put that, that link in the bio. Um, so, yeah, it's fine. Because it's like you're saying, VeggieTales is just a variation of Christian show. 
with comedy. Yeah, The Wizard of Oz. I, I tried to watch that. I was like, wait a minute. No, nah, see, <laughs> see, when the Wizards went to the other network, they, they kind of started lo- losing their mind with some stuff. And there's, there, 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 there's something, there's a Christian comedy, and then there's like Christian parody of secular movies. Like, like there, there's a difference. <laughs> like, my thing is like watching VeggieTales, Lord of the Bean. That was in reference to Lord of the Rings. It's like, no. That's when I saw Wizard of Oz, it was supposed to be like a parody of the Wizard of Oz, but at the same time, yeah. another way to say talk about the product of sun. Yeah, so it's like it's interesting how people try to build concepts like that, but sometimes I'm like just you know, you just want to take and be like, no. No. Stop it. Like, that's really how I feel. Like, sometimes I'll be seeing people do it, and I'll be like, no, just stop it. Stop it. Stop it right now. Like, so that's how that's how I look at it. It's like, you really got to understand. It's just like, no, you shouldn't have did it. I feel like you're enjoying that a bit too much. I'm not. not I'm really not. I'm just saying, like, that's how I feel. Like, sometimes when I'll be watching, I'll be like, I'd be like, just you looking at him, and you're like, what is happening? And she's like, no, stop it. No. I feel like if you have kids, your kids are going to be messed up. <laughs> My kids are not going to be messed up. My kids are just going to be comedians. <laughs> like, that's really what it is. They're going to be like, they'll be coming as often to everybody, and they'll just be like, I know who your daddy is. And they're like, I bet you do. And then they're going to walk off. I bring the comedy. Yeah. Okay. Any other commandment you got something to say about? No, I think I'm good. What was the point of that one? I don't know, but I feel like it, it, it was called for. So. Okay. All right. If you say something, well, thank you for being on here. No problem. No problem. Much appreciated. No problem. <laughs> okay. So, guys, we'll have another episode for you guys next week. And if you want to, I know Juneteenth is coming up. And we all know what Juneteenth is. If you don't, look it up. So Juneteenth will be this Friday. If you want to email me any videos or pictures of the outfits that you wore to celebrate, I was going to put it within the video, okay? And then you can just put your name in it as well. Like I said, email it. The email will be down below, all right? And I hope you guys enjoy the video. Don't forget to hit that like button. And don't forget, if you have topics or you want to be on here to talk about something, also email. And I guess I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Avery, you got to stop that. Let's just be honest.